So I suppose it's uh, time already. <laughs> so when other people walk in, they walk in. So this is a workshop uh, based on a project that I did uh, a few years ago. Uh, it was a project in which we attempted to build uh, a cert certificate for schools uh, to uh, uh, show that they had a, a certain level of quality in anti-bullying policy. Uh, and um, it was a very successful project, in a sense, because we had a lot of discussion and we produced a lot of interesting materials. But uh, the actual assessment and the actual certificates, well, I will tell you a little bit more about it. And it's supposed to be an interactive workshop. So during the workshop, I will ask you some of the questions that were dilemmas that we faced into the project. And then I will show you what the, the participants in the project, the teachers and the project workers and the students, uh, answered on the same questions. So, and this is not kind of a workshop to find the truth or to establish uh, a certificate or an assessment, uh, but it's kind of a test and an experience to, to reflect on the possibilities and limitations of uh, developing an assessment. Uh, this, this project that took place uh, in 2018 till 2020 is called the ABC project, the Anti-Bullying Certification Project. And the aim was to develop a reliable instrument for assessment for anti-bullying in uh, secondary schools. Uh, we developed uh, four products. And the first one was a procedure. How, how do you develop a certificate? How do you develop the assessment? So that's uh, some steps. To, to follow. Uh, the second one is uh, uh, we developed uh, school safety surveys for students and for teachers uh, to measure, uh, reliably measure bullying and in a feasible way for schools because most of these, there are lots of questionnaires around measuring bullying, but they're all suited to the, the needs of uh, researchers for academics and they're not suited to the needs of schools. So this, we, what we wanted to do is develop short questionnaires that were kind of, f that could be filled in uh, within half an hour or something in the lesson, and that would generate automatic uh, results that were easily translatable to measures that schools themselves can take. Then we developed uh, what we call a student visitation and a teacher training. And these two interventions were uh, meant as participation in the procedure, so uh, uh, we gave, we ba based these workshops on, the, on the, the, the results of the questionnaires, and then we talked with students and teachers about what they thought that the measures should be. Uh, sorry, I'm on the Yeah, and then finally we uh, developed a toolkit with what we thought were effective interventions. Uh, because schools usually don't know what effective interventions are, they just think in terms of uh, counseling and punishing and codes and that's it more or less. So the, the procedure looked like this. The first step is that the management collects what the school already is doing, not only on anti-bullying policy but also on pro-social policy. Because it's not just a problem in the school, it's also the whole school environment and the culture. So if the culture is bad, then uh, you can have an anti-bullying policy but it's kind of like carrying water to the sea. So you need to have a pro-social pro -social climate policy as well. Uh, then we do the surveys among the students and we get the statistical view of the situation. Uh, then we have this, uh, uh, the students review, which is a one-day uh, uh, assessment where the students actively go into the schools. They do uh, a little very short questionnaire among students as well. The first part of the questionnaire are closed questions to kind of introduce themselves as researchers. And then the last questions are open questions where the students can get into a conversation with other students and get an impression what and a feeling of what's happening in the school. And then the afternoon is uh, devoted to uh, uh, comparing the statistical numbers to their impressions from the interviews and to uh, go through a few steps to kind of brainstorm about what they think could be measures and then 
kind of boiling it down to two or three uh, uh, things that could kind of change the entire school culture. And we do similar things with uh, the teachers, but we, the approach with the teachers is a little bit different because we focus more on their role in the process and more ab we can more abstractly reflecting on the school policy as well. And then finally, we have the school management uh, itself fill in a summarizing checklist. In the checklist, there's also the summaries already of the previous phases. phases. But then we ask them, based on all this information, to fill in the checklist to, to reflect on how good they think they do themselves. And to propose a kind of formal goals for uh, improvement. Now, uh, after the project, we asked uh, the, the respondents uh, if they think that this project uh, uh, improved their, uh, their anti-bullying uh, policy. Because, of course, the trust in an assessment tool like that is most important. If people don't have a trust in it, then uh, nothing happens. And 70% uh, thought it was positive, 14% uh, thought it was negative, and 16% was unsure. And the students and the teachers uh, were most positive, so the people at the base were most positive. But stakeholders, but because part of the respondents were also external stakeholders, like people in municipalities, in the broader school boards, politicians, uh, European uh, stakeholders, and they were much more doubtful about uh, this. They were 50-50. Uh, which was uh, kind of a little bit surprising. So, through the whole project, we had a conflict between the partners. And the conflicts were uh, based on different questions. And one of the main questions was, should we do a self-assessment or do, should we do a certification? In the proposal, the proposal was called anti-bullying certification, but what we actually did was make a self-assessment. And it's not the same thing. If you have a formal ISO certification procedure, then you go through a number of uh, phases. This is the, the formal procedure of a certification. So you do an initial analysis. That's actually what we proposed. The self-assessment is an initial analysis. Then you define the policy. Then you define procedures to carry out the policy. Then you have an external audit. And then you get a certificate. And the certificate says you're certified or you're not. You don't get the certificate if you're not. So this is not kind of something that says something, it says something about the quality of the procedures. It doesn't say anything about the, the, the real quality of the anti bullying policy, it says something about the quality of the procedures. And it's a, an external assessment. That's important. What we did was make focus in the project on an internal assessment, but one of the partners uh, was, uh, uh, and it's important because this, this one partner is also the, 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 the host of the European Anti-Bullying Network, they disagreed and they said, we need a formal certificate. We need to involve an ISO certified institute to define a, certificate, a certificate. While other partners say, no, uh, schools are not interested in a certificate. They want to have good school policy and they don't, are not interested in an external auditor or something, especially not when they have to pay for it. So. Now, my first question to you is, and this is going to be a vote, uh, please put your hand in the air when you agree with this, uh, this, uh, 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 this statement. Uh, do you think we should score schools? Would, would it be useful to score schools? Should there be a kind of scoring on anti-bullying policy for schools? If you agree, put your hand up. Otherwise, a half one, <laughs> and the rest is insecure, insecure, or so. Can I ask why you're doubting this? What what is uh, your doubts about it? I think that maybe. Uh, Sorry, I have to give you the microphone. <laughs> Uh, I think that maybe like scoring of schools 
say something about the quality, but it doesn't say so much about the day-to-day -day work. And so if you get a scoring and you see the scoring, like in our school, for example, we do annual surveys for staff members, parents, and, and students. And then we spend the whole next year trying to work on improving the results of the survey. So I think a scoring says something about what is going on in a school at that specific time when the scoring measurements are taking place, but it might not say so much about the day-to-day -day work of trying to improve the scores. Sure, but uh, do we don't, uh, um, another consideration could be that scoring uh, helps the school to uh, set a starting point and then uh, show that they want to improve. And if they don't, have a mechanism like that, that there might be a lack of willingness to improve. Yeah, yeah that, that might, but then it's more of an evaluation process yeah. or like a, like a mapping process, yeah. the scoring process. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll show you what uh, the, the respondents in the project said. You see that uh, the, the, the opinions on this, just like you, were very divided. Uh, the, the, black, the red one here, 15% said, don't score at all. Uh, the, um, which one is this? The white one, 90% said, negotiate a level. So a negotiation between maybe external editors or internal stakeholders, negotiate something so that everybody agrees. 32% um, um, said, uh, score, but... Uh, make it voluntary to publish it. And 34% said uh, score schools, but uh, and make it mandatory to score it on a public website or something so that people are able to, to see it and to choose whether they want to go to that school or that sort of thing. So 50, 80, summarizing, 85% does support any type of scoring uh, and 37% prefers independent scoring and publishing. And if you look then what's below that, if you look who scored what, uh, you see that the students are mostly for scoring and publishing, but the external stakeholders, the politicians, they are not. Which is very interesting because before this project started, we were thinking that external stakeholders, like uh, politicians, would like to have a scoring mechanism in school because it would, could be a political mechanism to kind of force schools to show what they're worth. And that's, that's not at all what we expected. So maybe, this is my personal kind of interpretation, is that neoliberal Europe uh, is kind of, their neoliberalism is so much ingrained in European policies and national policies that politicians don't want to mess with the politics of what happens in lower levels and in institutions and in companies. They leave, want to leave it to the market. Oops. I don't want to show that yet. <laughs> Next question uh, for you. Uh, there's different ways to score. This was a question about scoring in general. It could be any score. But the next question is, would we like to have a European label? And then I'm thinking about, for example, the energy label. We were envisioning the idea of an energy label with A, A++, to, until D. And then we were imagining that you could have a system where you could say this is a D school or an A school or an A plus school. And we were actually thinking, some of the partners were thinking about how you could do that. And we were looking at how it's done with refrigerators and how it's done with, with the energy safety of houses and how they actually build up that kind of assessment. And we were looking whether we could translate that system into the quality uh, of, um, of anti-bullying policy. Uh, suppose we could do that. We made a beginning with that. I'm not sure whether we, it was a good attempt. But um, suppose uh, we could make a label like that. Would you think that that would be useful to have a European-wide quality label for safety of schools, like we also have a quality label for refrigerators and for the energy uh, level of houses. If you agree, put up your... <laughs> I 
and the people who are not, there's only one person that raises the hand, and the other people are unsure or are you against? Unsure, raise your hand. <laughs> okay, so you're four, so now I'm going to ask you four. Why? Um, I think for the same reason like before, because I, I don't think the outcome will really be relevant, but it will raise so much awareness and discussion that relevant processes probably will get started, even though like the measurement itself will probably not be of a lot of value. And so it's Okay, for you it would be kind of more like an uh, awareness instrument than, than a real quality instrument or a comparison instrument, yeah. And uh, you are, for example, insecure and, uh, about it. What's, uh, what, uh, would you, what is your reason to be in, in the middle? Well, I agree with that, uh, like she said. But I can also think that if the score is public, uh, maybe people can get comments about the scores and grades like that. And I think that's very bad because it can get bullied because they don't have good grades or scores like that. So yeah. yeah. Uh. Okay, let's have a look at uh, the, what the respondents in the project said. Again, people didn't quite agree on this. 90% uh, disagreed, 20% uh, was unsure, so less insurety among the respondents than among you, but still. Uh, quite a, a large minority, and 61% was positive. Uh, so, um, the teachers were most uh, uh, in favor of the, uh, establishing an, uh, a European label, which is surprising again, because in the previous question it was mainly the students that were that uh, uh, in for, for it. Um, the stakeholders, again, were less than average eager to establish a label. More or less the same numbers as in the last question. And uh, students were voting like the average in this, uh, this question, but they were slightly more unsure uh, and uh, much less against. So they, they were not against a label, but they were unsure whether it would work. But it was surprising that teachers thought that this, this would be useful. And uh, I think that one of the reasons, when I, because we were, I was in the project, I was talking with teachers about it, and I think that teachers are re were really willing to have a kind of um, st standard, the clarity about you know, what, is, what can we do, and what works, and what doesn't work, and on what level are we, how can we improve things. And this is all fuzzy for them. And I think that the scoring uh, for them was was kind of a little bit ambiguous, but uh, although they were for it, but they also were a little bit kind of unsure about it because scoring was also reflecting on them. <laughs> but uh, a, a leveled approach is, uh, was, was more like, like, okay, there are levels and we can go from somewhere to somewhere. I, I keep on going to the next slides and I shouldn't betray the res <laughs> results. So, uh, the next question is that I want to pose to you is um, we made a self-assessment in this project. So, um, and we made a kind of draft uh, uh, energy label, anti-bullying energy label. But um, the, uh, 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 one of the other partners said, no, we need a certification, a formal certificate for schools drafted by an ISO institution. And they actually approached an ISO institute, and outside of the project, they developed an anti-bullying certificate. So nowadays, there is an ISO certificate for anti-bullying. I don't agree with it. I actually stepped out of the network because I didn't agree with it. I didn't agree with the certificate itself, and I didn't agree with the components of the procedures in it. But, you know, it's controversial. <laughs> so, but what do you think about a certificate. So this is not a level thing, but the certificate is you get the certificate or not. It's a yes or no. Are your procedures okay or not? Who, who would be for that and who would not be? For? Who would be more very much against that? 
Everybody's really in the middle? Okay, you're nodding this time, so now I'm going to ask you why, why you're in the middle. So first of all, I, I was wondering what exactly the, the certificate would specify. So would it be your, I don't know, bullying percentages on a certain range or what exactly there is? No, a certificate is about procedures. It's not about certificates. So it's, no, did you do a research? Do you have an anti-bullying coordinator? Do you have a punishment procedure? Do you have uh, a counseling procedure? That sort of thing. And detailing what that is. Yeah, so I guess the, the main issue with that is, as you pointed out, that it's yes or no, as compared to an approach that is more, has more of a labeling or a sort of a grading, which gives you a bit more of a variation to it. So, yeah, I guess that's fairer in some way for schools to have more of a range. <laughs> yeah. the, the certificate is fair, or the energy label? The, the, the labeling. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes? yes. I, I agree. Um, I think a certificate is um, more effective because the labels are, we are working with students okay. or with, with adults. Uh, we are working with students, it's not with children. Um, and when we are talking about scores, um, the university who has a score, uh, there is a lot of competition between universities. So I don't think that's a good idea, but the certificate, uh, uh, how the procedure in your, your university goes, and if there is a, a policy officer and things like that, I think that that is uh, effective. Yeah. Yes? I also agree, but I think it's important to, um, to take some interventions to suppose, uh, to uh, mention some interventions to, um, yeah, to manage the different indicators in this uh, anti-policy. So there should be some consultancy during the, the, the getting, the, you have to do some research and some steps to get the certificate and during that you have to have consultancy so that people, that the school actually knows what to do to get the certificate. Yeah, but maybe also the different indicators for getting this, that uh, certificate. Uh, for example, um, to install a coordinator, anti-bullying coordinator, well, which step do you need to follow to uh, train and to implement uh, a coordinator in your school? So that should be quite detailed. I've, yeah, okay. I agree with all your comments, personally. Uh, but actually, the, the bullying label that is now there in Europe contained a, a very good introduction, which included all kinds of more, uh, comments about school climate. But when you looked in the actual demands and criteria for the routines, then it was really focusing on, uh, on ha just having a plan, but not what kind of plan and training, but not what kind of training and on disciplinary measures. And I'm thinking actually that having a focus on disciplinary me measures is a sign of an unsafe school. And uh, I think the focus should be much more on building the, the, the climate. And in the discussion we had about that label, uh, there was a refusal to detail how you do that. Because the partners, and especially the lead partner that was making the label, didn't want to uh, kind of detail uh, research conclusions and then translate it into procedures. So I work in, in an international school in Sweden and we have teachers coming from all over the world, but we're still following the Swedish school law and the Swedish curriculum, but we teach in 50% in English. And I think like in sweet, it's very clear that the differences between, for example, a teacher coming from the UK and a teacher being trained in Sweden as myself, where the Swedish school law doesn't really allow for much discipline, but in the UK curriculum, discipline is very much a part of, of how you're establishing what's right and wrong. And so I think a European vision of that would be hard because 
the individual countries are handling these things in very different ways, where Sweden has more like of a restorative justice approach to consequences and wouldn't even take the word discipline in their mouth, like that's, that's frowned upon. And we, we're trying to do more of support uh, instead of like, and, and having consequences, but doing it with support. So if you are bullying someone, why are you doing that? And how can I make sure that you get some strategies in not to do that again? And I think that may, might get lost in the cultural definitions of discipline or, or bullying yeah. in general. I think you touch upon a key point here, because in our project, uh, the Spanish and Greek partners were really kind of strong on discipline. And they couldn't envision another way of doing that in a school, while uh, the northern partners and, uh, and, and Italy were much more in the middle. Although in Italy, they, yeah, we're almost at the time. So I'll just show you. These were the views on certification, so you see again, uh, mixed uh, things, mixed uh, opinions. 47% uh, were positive, 34% was unsure, and 20% were uh, negative. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the support for a certification is a bit less than for uh, uh, a label. So these are different views of stakeholders, teachers, and students. And then you see again the thing that we saw before, that stakeholders are against it and the uh, students are rather for it and the uh, teachers are, uh, students and stakeholders are more unsure. Okay, thank you very much.